How surprised would you be if I told you that a good percentage of the food you eat doesn't digest? To even make it weirder, did you know that you need some kind of external organism to creep into your belly and wiggle down your large intestine just to feed the ugly, yucky bacteria in your colon? These organisms are called prebiotics and probiotics. The question is, what are the points of divergence between these two essential microbial substances in our body? Probiotics and prebiotics are both important for gut health. Probiotics are live microorganisms that are similar to the good bacteria that naturally live in your gut. Prebiotics are non-digestible food ingredients that promote the growth of good bacteria in your gut. The simple meaning is this. Probiotics are there to help the good bacteria in our gut, while prebiotics are the food for these good bacteria. Because your body cannot digest the prebiotics that are found in some of the fiber, vegetables, fruits, and legumes you eat, your good gut bacteria turns them into food and digests them. So just how significant are probiotics and prebiotics to the overall health of humans? Probiotics and prebiotics have been shown to have a number of health benefits, including Prebiotics are carbs that your body can't digest, so they simply act like food in your lower digestive tract so that your healthy gut bacteria can feed on them and grow. The idea here is that prebiotics work hand in hand with probiotics to improve your digestion. You can't wish away the role that probiotics play in reducing the risk of infections. Probiotic supplements can reduce the risk of infectious diseases and even make us less reliant on antibiotics. This is noteworthy because antibiotic treatment has the tendency to fail due to antibiotic resistance and this may lead to severe illnesses. According to ProMed Central, probiotics and prebiotics play an important role in regulating the immune system through intestinal microbiota modulation with decreased proliferation of microorganisms beneficial to health and reduced pathogenic microorganisms, as well as by the systemic actions of the products of microbial metabolism such as short-chain fatty acids. Probiotics are becoming a good way to deal with depression and poor mental health today. According to experts, gut microorganisms, which include probiotics, help in the production and expression of neurotransmitters which affect appetite, mood, or sleeping habits, all of which are major players in our mental health. Recent studies concluded that probiotics significantly reduce total cholesterol and low-density lipoprotein cholesterol in hypercholesterolemic individuals. The simple meaning is that probiotics can help in reducing the risk of CVD or cardiovascular diseases. According to an article on Medical News Today, prebiotics and probiotics both support the body in building and maintaining a healthy colony of bacteria and other microorganisms, which supports the gut and aids digestion. Now that we have an idea of how beneficial these guys are to us humans, I'm sure you want me to break down their modus operandi or MO for you. Don't worry, I got you covered. Probiotics work by adding good bacteria to your gut. These bacteria can help to crowd out bad bacteria and improve digestion. Prebiotics work by feeding the good bacteria in your gut. This helps the good bacteria to grow and multiply, which can also improve digestion. Next question in your mind at this point would be how to get these probiotics and prebiotics into your system in sufficient quantity. Well, let me share some sources of probiotics and prebiotics with you. Are you ready? Some good sources of probiotics include the following. Yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, tempeh. Some good sources of prebiotics include the following. Fruits, such as bananas, apples, and pears. Vegetables, such as onions, garlic, and asparagus. Legumes, such as beans and lentils. Whole grains, such as oats and barley. You can also get probiotics and prebiotics from probiotic-rich foods, such as the following. Kombucha. Tempeh. Miso. Sauerkraut kimchi. Probiotics and prebiotics work together to create a healthy gut environment. Probiotics add good bacteria to the gut while prebiotics feed the good bacteria. This helps the good bacteria to grow and multiply, which can improve digestion and overall health. You can actually take prebiotics and probiotics together. 
When you do that, it's called microbiome therapy. Combining both can actually make your probiotics significantly more effective. The good thing is that probiotic supplements can be helpful when it comes to replenishing the good bacteria in the intestine. Some probiotic supplement manufacturers will even go as far as mixing in prebiotics so that they can serve as a form of food source for the probiotics bacteria when they reach the colon or large intestine. There are many types of probiotics, each with its own unique benefits. Some of the most common types of probiotics include lactobacillus. These constitute a significant number of human and animal microbiota, especially in the digestive system and the female genital area. It assumes a kind of mutual relationship with the human body because it protects the host against potential invasions by pathogens and in turn, the host provides a source of nutrients. Bifidobacterium. They're usually very widespread in the gastrointestinal tract, although at some point, strains have been isolated from the vagina and mouth of humans and other mammals. Saccharomyces. This is a genus of fungi that includes many species of yeast. It literally means sugar fungus. It plays a vital role in many food production processes. For example, it's known as the baker's yeast. Streptococcus thermophilus. This is another type of good bacteria or probiotic found in the gut. It produces what's known as lactic acid. Among other things, it can help break down food, absorb nutrients, and fight off bad organisms that might cause diseases. This probiotic is commonly used in the production of some fermented food, like yogurt. There are also many different types of prebiotics, each with its own unique benefits. Some of the most common types of prebiotics include inulin. Inulins are a group of naturally occurring polysaccharides produced by many types of plants, industrially most often extracted from chicory. They belong to a class of dietary fiber called fructans, and is typically found in rhizomes or plant roots and they serve as a means of storing energy. It helps to reduce calorie intake as well as blood glucose and cholesterol. Olga fructose. Now, along with inulins, they've been termed probiotics because they are non-digestible food ingredients that stimulate growth along with some potentially health-stimulating intestinal bacteria. Galacto-Olgosaccharides Now, I know that Galacto-Olgosaccharides, or GOS, kind of sound like a supervillain, but they're prebiotics that are made up of plant sugar linked in chains. You can find them in beans, dairy products, and root vegetables. When they arrive in the colon, they're usually undigested. However, they increase bowel mass and help to promote the growth of certain bacteria. Fructo Olgosaccharide FOS, as they are referred to, are plant sugars that occur in vegetables and fruits. The interesting fact about them is that they can be made in a lab. As with other prebiotics, they don't get digested until they get to the colon, which is in the large intestine. In the colon, they're digested by good bacteria, which helps them grow. On a general note, probiotics and prebiotics are safe for most people. However, some people may experience some side effects, such as gas and bloating. Probiotics and prebiotics are both important for gut health. They've been shown to have a number of health benefits, including improved digestion, reduced risk of infection, stronger immune system, better mental health, and reduced risk of some chronic diseases. There are many good sources of probiotics and prebiotics, and the amount you need will vary depending on your individual needs. It's important to talk to your doctor to determine the right amount for you. If you found the information in this video educational and fascinating, then I've done a good job. As always, my goal on this channel is to bring you some highly educational health information with a little bit of entertaining presentation of the facts so that you can enjoy learning. And if you like this video, then please take the time to watch the other videos on this channel because I know you'll like them just as much. So go ahead and follow the prompt on your screen right now to watch the next video titled Happy Gut Equals Happy Mind. There you're going to learn how the activities in your gut affect your emotions and your mental health. And please, while you're doing that, remember to subscribe in the channel if you're new here and give all my videos a thumbs up to encourage me to make some more interesting videos like this one. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time.